Appreciate you, my guy.
Oh, it's a yard, but you know what it is. We're about to get at the yard, but right now we're about to check that out. Y'all stay tuned in. All right, y'all see the festivities going on, man. Full of an A1. Johnny. Johnny. Janae. Janae. Pleasure to meet all you. Anybody's first time in a kayak or have we all paddled before? First time. No worries. Good. The twilight tour is going to be the easiest tour we've got because usually the wind dies at night. It's going to be really lovely. So, the most important piece of equipment you're going to be wearing today is this light vest. Anytime you're in the boat on the water, you need to have these on in all buckles we can catch. It's not our rule. The big boss rule will get a big fine if you don't do it. So please help us help you keep all of us safe. Pick a tandem, any tandem, just not those two on the end, those are guide boats. If you have a more confident paddler, I recommend there the paddler in the back, or a stronger paddler. If you want to put anything, the back hatch is the biggest paddler. and it would make a nice soft sleeping mat. Yeah, so this arrow. is arrowweed or arrowroot. It is native. You can also tell the stalks are really straight and true. Very good for native people to make arrows with. Thus its name, arrowweed, arrowroot. You can see the adults pick these pretty little purple flowers before they burst and become little seed pods. Right behind us, thank you, Duran. He knew, the tamarisk or salt cedar. Called salt cedar because its leaves are salty. If you do want to try, you can take a couple, but I would recommend take a little bit. I, I said that to somebody, he grabbed a big fistful and stuffed it in his mouth, and he was really unhappy with it. Again, hilarious for me, but it is funny that it actually is salty. That's why nothing out here will eat it. So please, will you guys eat it up because no other animals will. These plants come from Asia. There, there is a black shining beetle that does oh, wow. eat the tamarisk. So that is their relationship. The tamarisk groves grow, the black shining beetle population raises, they eat down the tamarisk and the beetles die off. So they kind of regulate themselves thus. So nothing eats the tamarisk, it's kind of taking over here. So they thought about bringing the beetle here. They did a three year study to make sure that it wasn't gonna mess with anything else in the ecosystem. They decided it was gonna be okay. They shipped over a bunch of beetles, let them loose and they all died. It is too hot out here. We have weeks where every day the temperature is hitting over 120 and it just cooked up those little beetles. But interestingly enough, I heard at UC Davis, they're um, breeding them and they're trying to make them more heat resistant so they can bring them back. So they're trying to breed them, get them a little bit more heat tolerant and to try again round two. But because we did, they didn't work out, we get burn piles. So you can see back there, 
park service comes through here once a season, packs it all down and burns it up. If you came through here a year ago, this whole thing was just an archway, all of the cameras. So since they've cut it down, the arrowweed arrow root has been able to grow back. It's given some of our native plants kind of a little bit of a chance. The other thing the tamarisks do is they soak up a ton of water. Each one of those plants is drinking at least 20 gallons of water a day, which we all know water is a big precious commodity out here, so it's not good. Oh, last thing I really like about the tamarisk. If you look out there, you see those two plants happily living in an island. I punched out, a, I pointed out a bunch of tamarisks. We've seen them all up and down the bank. They can live even if they're completely submerged in water. The reason is their root system. That's why the Mormons originally brought them here. They wanted to help fight erosion. They have really intense roots. They can burrow 30 to 50 feet deep. So the why they can live when they're submerged in water. Most plants, if they're submerged in water, they get root rot. Their roots rot out and they die. But because this plant's roots are so intense, they can go underground and find little hollows, little pockets of air underground. So even if the whole plant is underwater, the roots are still getting a little bit of dry and so they don't rot out. So that is how the tamarisk can live, even if they're completely submerged in water, which is pretty cool, but makes it really hard for us to get rid of them. Yeah, we don't love the tamarisk. Thanks, man. Y'all looking at Bob, Bob House. Y'all burned down. It was actually about to make this a dam at one point, but they changed their mind. Super dope though. Scenery out here was beautiful. I don't know if y'all can see it, man, but it's an old scalpel right there. That Bible house burned down. He usually used to use that to get back and forth across the river. Welcome to the Oh, I got it. It's only about 10, 15 feet Oh, it's better than the 75 or 100 right out there. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> 
Now I just want to take my hot dog out. <laughs> just do what you want. Yeah, How's your dog coming, babe? It's gonna be good enough. <laughs> Careful, when I jack, I come get you. Oh my gosh, cute. Enjoyed your graham crackers? Me out. Right. Really? Yeah, pretty good. Over the campfire. That's what I said. Dog. Dog. Right, smart Shall dog. I had a veggie dog. That was perfect. Right on time, right? Perfect. Right on time. Right on hand in the desert. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. You're like, there's an open body with all. All right, so right now we're at the garden at the Wynn Hotel. Get ready to see what this is looking like. to this man I think we get a chance to ride around in the ghost town and stuff so y'all stay tuned we're gonna let y'all know how they look all right Just made it out here, getting ready to use the ATVs. We're about to bring out some AR footage, so y'all stay locked in. Let's see what we got behind us. We got them all lined up. We are suited and booted and ready to go. It's actually not that hot, so we're excited about doing this. I, at first, I was a little afraid it was going to be too hot, but the weather's actually perfect. So, yeah, we'll keep y'all along for the way. Let y'all know what we see. We're hoping to see some wildlife and some sheep and stuff like that. So, yeah, stay tuned, y'all. What's up with it? As you can see, we just wrapped it up. Dirty as hell. Hell, we almost bust out a couple times, but 
I definitely did crash. <laughs> Not a bad crash, but I did go up on the naked and the tree. Again, that's actually our second time crashing because we crashed on the kayak too. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't a bad crash. guys so we are just getting back from the atv tour and it was amazing it was super hot and it was dusty and dirty but it was definitely worth it definitely a bucket list experience um yeah so y'all stay tuned to see what we have next in the meantime we got to get showered up because we are super dirty literally from head to toe there was like dust everywhere so much dust y'all but it was definitely worth it but y'all stay tuned we'll see y'all later Got on Fremont Street, getting ready to uh, try Slotzilla. I don't know if y'all can see it. Dope little spot. It's probably about 20 minutes outside of the strip, but uh, definitely worth it to come try it. We're gonna bring y'all a little footage. Let y'all check that out. See how it is. disappointed slotzilla is booked up to thursday and we leave tomorrow which is wednesday it's super bummer but right now we're about to get ready to try the indoor uh go-kart that should be fun you know what i mean we gotta try to do something to make up for it but y'all stay tuned we're gonna bring that footage to y'all right now let's go watching our little safety video about to get ready to hit the hit the little raceway Make something happen, man. Really bummed out about Slides and I wish that was over, man. Definitely. Definitely was uh, one of our top uh, attractions that we wanted to try, but next time, you know what I mean? But uh, for, for now, we got to just make the best of it. All right, y'all, so for excursion number two, we could not do the Slotzilla today, so we had to settle for indoor go-karting. So we got our team here. Back here, they ready to go. Everybody getting suited and booted back there. All right, so I'm in the front. I got lucky cart number 13. Y'all see that number right there? So just so y'all know, I'm about to dust everybody. I'm about to win. I already had my ATV practice earlier today, so we are good to go. All right, y'all ready, team? Cool. Uh, you got Nay in the front. Now you know what time it is. Getting ready to make it happen. You already know about the win. That's an easy one. <laughs> All right, so Brody, Brody and his girl in the back, man. But like I said, I'm winning, so. In the conversation, and we're gonna see the results once we finish. Watch the excuses for later. Hey, Brody. I thought it was a game. I do this. Who y'all see? Y'all see anybody? I do this. I told you. See races. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As I told you. You see that name? You see the results? No, I can't lie. I can't yeah, make this up. I told redo. you before I started. And then that's a drifting. Like, that's not real. Look at the excuses. Listen, 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 listen. Look, listen. listen. I would have caught that man behind the camera <laughs> if it wasn't for this. Right. I would have caught. <laughs> no, these two messed us shit up. <laughs> these two. She
Yeah, I'm gonna get it. Tell me what you want out of this club.